So we will start with having a look at what are end of cycle outputs and a few places we can usually find them. And then we will look at some examples. The idea for this video came from my patrons. So thank you patrons so much for the idea and also for your support. Now an end of cycle output will usually output a trigger when the module itself finishes its cycle. Already here we have a module that uh, will most likely have an end of cycle output and that's an attack decay envelope or more precisely a function generator. In this case, uh, just so we can see it better on the scope, I have a kick drum here and the end of cycle output is triggering the kick drum. Um, so whenever the cycle comes to an end, the bass drum will be triggered. So let's have a look on the scope. I will trigger the attack decay envelope with this trigger here. And then when it will come to an end, we will see the kick drum function and here kick drum let's do this again so you can see we have the function then it's reaching its end and then the kick drum is being triggered this is more or less the basic idea behind this output there are many different modules with such an output here i have a few examples so for example we have rampage which is also a function generator and we have an end of cycle output for each of the channels. We have another envelope from Bog Audio, the DADSR envelope. Also here we have an end of cycle output. Here with the poly ADSR from Nischi, we have something interesting. We have an end of, of everything actually. <laughs> we have an end of attack. So whenever the attack phase comes to an end, we will have a trigger out of this output. The same we have the end of decay, end of sustain, end of release. So we have many possibilities with this module. The node sequencer from JW got an end of cycle output recently, which is also really helpful. So the sequencer will play, reach its end, and we will have an end of cycle output. Then we have the Euclidean sequencer from Count Modular, also end of cycle output. The SEC3 from VCV, really interesting because we have an output for each of the steps. So we can use the last step or the first step, depending what you want to achieve as an end of cycle output and trigger different um, things with it. And also samplers uh, will also most of the time will have an end of cycle output also here with a complex simpler from Nischi. We have an end of cycle output. Um, so we can use this for all sorts of things. And let's really have a look at a few examples. So here we have a sequence coming from permutation, sequencing two voices. So once it's sequencing the additive vibration and once an FM voice with two kitchen sync from Squinky Labs. Now I have an AD envelope for each of them. So this is the AD envelope for the additive vibration. Just to bring the voice in and out. And here I have another AD envelope for the kitchen sync. And now what we can do, we can use the end of cycle of each of the envelopes to trigger each other. So here we have the end of cycle output. I will use it to trigger the second envelope. And its uh, end of cycle output will trigger the first envelope. Now when I trigger one of them, they will trigger each other. Now, this is cute and all, but it can get quite interesting when we start modulate um, the envelopes. So let's use sample and hold. I will just duplicate the one I have here already from Bog Audio. Let's change its range to no, uh, positive, negative positive one volt, just so the range is not too uh, large. Now, we will use the end of cycle outputs to trigger the sections of the sample and hold. So this will trigger the first section and the second envelope will trigger the second section. And now let's modulate, for example, the attack times one and two. Let's change them also a bit. And already we have something a bit more alive. So they are cross triggering and cross modulating each other. Now let's also do something like this. We can also combine the triggers, those end of cycle triggers and create a nice atmospheric background voice. 
So here I have a Boolean logic module, and actually before we do this, I want to show you for, uh, for a second that uh, teleport modules I'm using here, those are from Little Utils. I'm using them to teleport um, the signals across the patch without having too many cables going in all sorts of ways, so it just makes the patch a bit cleaner. Here, for example, I have a one that's receiving the clock, and it's outputting the same signals from this module here, and this uh, uh, module here is receiving audio, and it's teleporting those signals to this audio output, and it's going to the mixer, so I just have it to have the patch a bit cleaner. Um, okay, let's go back to the Boolean logic. Every Boolean logic module, we will use it to combine both triggers. So let's use the first end of cycle output and the second one. And now out of the OR or the XOR, never mind, we will get a trigger whenever one or the other is active. So let's trigger the Hyatt output uh, module every the Hyatt from PROC going through some delay. I can also trigger the sample and hold dev here, which will change the uh, sound itself and also the delay times. By the way, the gate inputs on the sample and hold are normal, so when I have something on the upper section, it will be, it will trigger also the lower section. They don't have to connect them both. So again, we combined the end of cycle outputs from both envelopes, which are not steady. They are happening at different times because we are modulating the attack. And this is triggering, both of them are triggering the Hyatt and also modulating the sound and the delay time. Okay, let's add a nice bass to this. I have here the trigger sequencer from Count Modular. The voice itself is coming from Ona, from Nano Modules. I'm just mixing a few different waveforms. This is going through tangents. Um, let's have a listen to this. Oh yeah. We can also add some drums to this. So here I have a few more prop modules, the bass drum and two snares. And for some stability, I have here Knock from Vult as the main kick drum or bass drum. Okay, very nice. So let's have a look at another example. So another feature that is common to see on a function generator is a looping mode. So the function will loop and oscillate. So here I have again the AD envelope from Borg Audio. If I turn on looping with this button here, we will get an oscillating function or a looping envelope. Of course, we can change its properties also. Just like this, this can also go into audio rates, but in our case, we are more interested in the end of cycle output that together with the looping function can be very useful for generative patches, for example. So here down, let me just change this again. So here down, I have a few examples. Uh, we have again this attack decay envelope. Let's activate the looping again by act uh, activating this button here. And we have also two basic oscillators from Squinky Labs going through Punch, um, which is a stereo VCA. Um, so first of all, let's use the envelope itself to open the VCA. So now it's just a looping envelope opening and closing the VCA. Now let's use the end of cycle output to trigger sample and hold. And this sample and hold will again modulate the attack and decay times. So we get every time, every cycle, we get a different envelope. Sometimes it will be longer, sometimes it will be shorter. Okay, 
Okay, I have here another sample and hold that will generate pitch information through a quantizer, so let's trigger it as well with the end of cycle output. So again, now with each cycle, we get a different envelope and a different note. So we have a nice generative voice that can play for a long, long time and never really uh, repeat itself. Now we can go even further and use the same end of cycle output to trigger another voice, uh, something maybe a bit more bassy. So here I have the percussive vibration. Uh, it will play a pedal note, the same note over and over again, but will be triggered only after the cycle has ended and a new cycle begins. So let's use the end of cycle to trigger this voice. Oh yeah. Very nice. Okay, let's make this a bit more complicated. So here down, I have the note sequencer from JW. This is sequencing the additive vibration, in this case, polyphonically. So it sends three notes at once. We have three pitch inputs on the additive vibration. Now we have here another AD envelope. Its end of cycle output will clock the sequencer through the clock input so with each cycle the sequence will advance one step and it's again triggering a sample and hold that will modulate its attack and decay times so i'm going to use the end of cycle output from the first envelope to trigger this one just like this have a look here also on the sequencer you can see it's progressing and we have the voice Now the note sequencer has also an end of cycle output and we will use this to add another layer to the sound. So here I have the Chronoblob 2. It's receiving um, the same, a copy of the additive vibration, a copy of this voice, but it's going through a VCA. Again, I'm using punch and I have another AD envelope to control this VCA. So we will use the end of cycle output from the sequencer to trigger this envelope. So with each cycle, we will get another layer. Let's wait for the sequencer to end and then we will get this delayed voice. Now let's use the same end of cycle output to trigger new notes on the sequencer through the random trigger input. So now when the cycle ends, we will get a new sequence. Have a look here on the grid. Just like this. This is more or less generative, so things will happen by themselves and will constantly change and evolve. Let's wait for another cycle to end of the sequencer. Very nice. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Okay, so here we have another module that has usually an end of cycle output, and this is a burst generator. Now a burst generator will generate a burst of triggers that we can use to trigger other modules. So here I'm using it to trigger a sequencer. I'm using here the sequencer from Bog Audio. Um, it has eight steps, and also the burst generator is set to output a burst of eight triggers. So one trigger for each step. As our voice, I have here interzone, 
going through some delay. I'm also using uh, quantum to quantize the signal. So let's listen to the sequences one by one. This will be the first sequence. And the second one. Third. Very nice. So we have four sequences and we will use now a sequential switch to combine those sequences and have them play one after the other. So let's use the one from VCV, the one that has four inputs, four inputs and one output. Let's use the sequences one, two, three and four and now we need the trigger to switch between the sequences and the end of cycle trigger from the birth generator would fit perfectly because whenever a sequence comes to an end it will switch to the next sequence and this is exactly what we want so here we have the end of cycle output from the birth generator let's send it to the clock input so this will clock the sequential switch and we'll switch between the sequences and let's send the switch to quantum so the signal will also be quantized and we have the four sequences playing one after the other you can see them switching here number three now we play number four Now we can use the end of cycle output from the from one burst generator to trigger another burst generator. So here I have the one from count modula, um, which is triggering the Euclidean sequencer. Also uh, from count modula, so it will trigger it with again with the burst of triggers. Or in this case, it's called pulses. Now um, this Euclidean sequencer is sequencing knock. And I'm uh, controlling also the fury with uh, another envelope. So this will create a sort of a kick and bass sound. And I'm sending the high frequencies to a delay. So let's do this. Let's send the end of cycle output to trigger the second burst generator. Oh yeah. Okay, so the burst generator, the first one, will finish its cycle and it will trigger the second burst generator that will trigger this lovely, lovely bass drum. Okay, let's add some a nice snare to this. I have here the gate sequencer from Impromptu, sequencing two different types of snares. Again, I'm using the teleport modules, just so I don't have to send these uh, cables all the way up to the mixer. It will teleport them and will they will come out of here. So let's unmute this. Oh yeah. Oh man. Okay, okay, okay. I have here another voice, this time with two FM operators, another FM voice going through some uh, delay with Sangster. Now this is being sequenced by the phrase sequencer. But we will use the end of cycle output from the second burst generator, the one from count modular, to run this sequencer. So whenever the cycle ends, we will get a new note or a new step on the phrase sequencer. So let's do this. Oh yeah. one more time okay 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 let's have a look at another example okay so here I have a sample playing on the complex simpler uh, if you're interested by the way I will put a link in the description to a sound pack I prepared full of interesting textures um, but let's listen to this sample first this is how it sounds like one more time
Okay, now it's end of cycle output, so whenever this sample comes uh, to an end, it will trigger another voice, in this case it's a bass voice from the percussive vibration. So let's unmute it and wait for the cycle to end. Oh yeah, one more time. Very nice. I have here another sample playing. This one is more of a drum loop. Let's have a listen to this. So this is the loop. Now you can see that I'm using the end of cycle output in order to detect the BPM of this loop. So what I'm doing, I'm sending the end of cycle output to a clock multiplier. In this case, because the loop is quite long, I'm multiplying it by 32. And this is going to the BPM calculator from AS. It will calculate the BPM of an incoming clock. And you can see that it's steady. It stays uh, more or less constant on 133 BPM, which means that this loop has um, the rate of 133 BPM. So we can use the end of cycle output also to uh, detect the BPM of a loop, which is quite, quite useful. And then we can sync all sorts of different things. So here, for example, I have clocked set to 133, just in case I'm using the end of cycle to reset the clock so that it will always stay in sync also. And now I'm using it to run or to drive a sequencer. I have here ions from the geodesics going through a quantizer and sequencing terraform. So now this sequence will be in sync with the drum loop because thanks to the end of cycle output, I could calculate the BPM of this loop. So let's have a listen. Yes, oh yes. Okay, I have here also Simpliciter, again Nischi. I'm also using the new expander, the tape expander. And I'm using the end of cycle of this sample here. You can see it's chopped. And the end of cycle will output a trigger whenever each one of those little segments comes to an end. And this is triggering the random function here or the random trigger input on the expander, which will randomly play the sample in all sorts of ways, sometimes backwards, sometimes forward, sometimes slower, sometimes quicker. So let's have a listen to this. By the way, it's going through the Briatus for some extra crunch. It's just something nice and glitchy. So you can see how many possibilities there are with using the end of cycle triggers. It's basically endless. Um, and that was it. Like always, there will be a link in the description to the different patches. Feel free to download them and take a closer look. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you enjoy what I do, consider becoming a patron. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell. And have a good one.